Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity for me to participate in this conference. It's very special for me as a head of research and technology affairs uh, for uh, Office of Women's Health in the, in the Department of Health and Human Services to be here in, at this conference that celebrates women in computing science. Breast cancer, and this will be the major topic of my uh, talk today. Uh, <clears throat> I will be talking about novel digital technologies for breast cancer imaging. Breast cancer, as many of you know, uh, is one of the top priorities for this administration and U.S. government at the moment. About one in eight women in this country will have breast cancer. This disease truly reached epidemic proportions. On the slide, you see a remarkable work by Nancy Fried, a talented artist from New York City, who recently had breast cancer and mastectomy. I believe her work symbolizes the devastating impact of breast cancer in general and mastectomy in particular on a woman's life. It was the possibility to offer women less traumatic and more effective options in diagnosis and treatment of breast cancer that became a major driving for force for us at the Depart Department of Health and Human Services to develop uh, and support novel breast imaging technologies. I'd like to start with a disclaimer. Radiologic imaging, as many of you know, will never prevent breast cancer. However, while we are waiting for fundamental breakthroughs in breast cancer prevention and treatment, radiologic imaging remains the centerpiece of breast cancer care. I would like to address two major questions. Why we believe that novel imaging technologies will improve quality, access, and cost-effectiveness of breast cancer care on a national scale, and how government-driven national international research programs by bringing together federal agencies, uh, industrial manufacturers, and academic organizations can bridge the gap between research and marketing in order to bring promising technologies to women. Radiologic imaging, specifically conventional film-based uh, mammography has been shown to reduce mortality of breast cancer by about 30% in women older than 50 years of age and by about 17% in women younger than 50 years of age. However, recent data indicate that 60% of women uh, 40, 49 age category and about 70% of women younger than 40, have fully radiodense breast tissue, which is not transparent for conventional X-ray mammography. In September 99, we convened a consensus conference that clearly demonstrated unanimously. We brought together leaders of industry and academia in breast imaging, and there was a unanimous conclusion that uh, there is a room for continued improvement with conventional film-based mammography. However, it was novel technologies that represent the most fertile territory for improved control of minimal breast cancer. The rationale for, that, for this decision was most eloquently expressed by Dr. Edward Sickles, a world-renowned radiologist from University of California at San Francisco, who expressed his dilemma about supporting evolutionary versus revolutionary technologies. Novel imaging technologies are expected to improve early detection, which is critical for cure and reduce mortality or death rate. It is, they are expected to improve accuracy of staging, critical for local tumor control and cost-effective treatment. Telemammography is expected to bring world-class radiologic expertise to rural areas, community hospitals, remote populations. It was the desire to bring a revolution of digital technologies to breast cancer care that was the ultimate goal of our programs. 
Over the last six years, we've supported every imaginable novel breast imaging technologies, digital X-ray mammography, breast MRI, development and testing of these technologies, uh, stereotactic computerized biopsy, um, molecular cellular imaging uh, using nuclear medicine and positron emission tomography. We focus not only on the development of these digital, uh, digital imaging modalities, but also on the technologic avenues that they can open, such as image processing, computer-aided diagnosis, telemammography. In addition, we uh, strongly have been supporting uh, image-guided, computerized, minimally invasive diagnosis and treatment. And I will describe some of these programs to you today. The aim of our programs, however diverse, is to facilitate transfer and development of promising technologies from laboratory bench to women. In the hope to achieve this goal, we established partnerships across the government with every imaginable federal agency, academic organizations, um, manufacturers, in the hope to facilitate all stages of technology transfer, development, evaluation, and large-scale imp implementation. Currently, digital X-ray mammography is considered to be the key research area for improved control of breast cancer in large-scale screening programs. It was seen, it was envisioned in September 91, and it is accepted now as the next generation most likely uh, large-scale screening technology in breast cancer. Compared to film-based uh, mammography, digital mammography is expected to improve image quality and therefore early lesion detection at a reduced radiation dose. In addition, it will open new avenues such as image processing for um, improved lesion visualization, computer-aided diagnosis for enhanced radiologic interpretation, and telemammography for facilitated expert consultation. Our approach to the development of digital mammography was twofold. First, to establish a um, partnership of academic and, and, and industrial organization leading the world in the development of digital imaging technology. And secondly, to establish partnerships with NASA, Department of Defense, Department of Energy, National Science Foundation, every imaginable government organization that have had successful track record in the development of digital imaging technologies, um, image analysis, transmission, and display. In early 1993, we established an international multidisciplinary digital mammography development group that brought together two industrial and five academic partners. In addition, we established collaborations with FDA, uh, Agency for Healthcare Policy Research, and HICWA, or Healthcare Financing Administration, in order to bridge the gap between clinical testing and development of this technology with regulatory and reimbursement policy decision. Space, energy, intelligence, defense technologies, particularly in the area of digital detectors and display systems, sophisticated algorithms for image analysis and computer-aided diagnosis, high-performance, low-cost networks, proved critical, if not breakthrough, for development of comprehensive digital mammography. These partnerships of government agencies, industry, and academia facilitated development of digital mammography by at least five, 10 years, conservatively estimated. You can see the first digital mammography prototype developed by University of Toronto in collaboration with Fisher Imaging Corporation. The display portion of this technology came from the defense community identified by us. The X-ray acquisition portion of this technology came from Department of Energy supported work. On the right, you can see two images. On the left, image of a phantom used by the American College of Radiology for accreditation of conventional mammographic facilities in this country. On the right, image of the same phantom was acquired with the first prototype. 
there is a drastic increase in contrast between simulated lesions and background of the phantom that allow us to see smaller lesions of lower contrast. These, are, these images were, were among the first acquired by um, digital mammographic technology, and they showed a rather drastic improvement in image quality in normal volunteers, and more recently in patients with breast cancer. Image processing component of our digital development group um, was headed by Steve Pizer, whose name I'm sure is uh, known to many of you, and Dr. Eda Pisano, University of North Carolina. This group demonstrated that image processing identified about 17% of lesions in women with fully radiodense, radiopaque breast tissue that were missed on conventional mammography. On the right, you see comparison of conventional mammography and image digitization and processing. On the left panel, you see a conventional image and a green arrow, and I hope you, you are able to see that green arrow, points to a lesion hidden behind chest wall. On the right, after image di digitization and processing, there is a considerable improvement in our ability to see this lesion. Computer-aided diagnosis of our group is headed by Dr. Kunio Doi and Dr. Robert Nishikawa, University of Chicago. This is a world pioneering group in computer-aided diagnosis. Uh, this group demonstrated that neural networks managed to detect about 50% of breast cancer lesions missed in routine mammographic uh, setting. Some of the lesion was detected by computers about five years before it became clinically apparent to radiologists. Telemammographic component of our group is headed by Dr. Ayman Abdel Malik, uh, General Electric Corporation, in collaboration with Dr. Daniel Coppens, Massachusetts General Hospital. So far, uh, this group achieved more than 60,000 mammographic image transmission without any compromise in image quality or loss of data. They concluded that screening large-scale telemammography can be achieved using today's telecommunications technologies. However, full-field digital mammography that I just demonstrated to you, image processing, computer-aided diagnosis and telemammography are limited today to a handful of luminary academic institutions. The more excited we have become about the potential impact of digital mammography on breast cancer screening, the more frustrated we have felt that it would be very difficult to make an impact on breast cancer morbidity and mortality on a national scale if a significant fraction of women did not have access to this uh, technologies in clinical trials and routine clinical settings. Consequently, we entered, we created a partnership of the Department of Defense, National Cancer Institute, and our Office of Women's Health in the Office of the Secretary of the DHHS to develop and test mobile breast care center. The goal of the project is to put this cutting edge imaging computer and tele telecommunications technologies on a mobile platform to make them available particularly to underserved and remote uh, populations, to improve their access to clinical trials and high quality care. We believe that strategic partnerships is critical for the achievement of our goal. Department of Defense brings to the, uh, brings to the project the unparalleled ability to integrate technologies in a very prompt fashion combined with Telemedicine, DOD telemedicine test bed, which is a world leading unique infrastructure of advanced telecommunications. Our department, on the other hand, brings to the project NCI's expertise in design and management of clinical trials combined with our office mission and policy in public health service. Mobile Breast Care Center is envisioned as a comprehensive transportable breast care facility. However, the first step would be to integrate screening and diagnostic component of the vehicle, containing state-of-the-art imaging, computer technologies, and telecommunications technologies for online expert 
multidisciplinary expert consultation and its integration with local healthcare providers. You can see a vehicle, it's a very large vehicle, about 18-wheeler truck weighing about 90,000 pounds. We wanted to achieve inside of the truck the feeling of a living group, not the feeling of a clinic, not the feeling of a hospital. For women to be comfortable, for women, for women not to feel that they are in a mobile facility, to make them comfortable with, their, uh, with this environment. Uh, this vehicle today contains digital mammography, advanced computer technologies, and advanced video telecommunications technologies. It has been pointed out before that healthcare delivery tends to provide less than standard care to women who are older, poor, less educated, black, and Hispanic. I hope that Mobile Breast Care Center project will demonstrate how strategic partnerships or government agency can achieve that important role of government to do for, for a community of people whatever they need to have uh, done but cannot do for themselves. Since in all that people can do for themselves, government should not interfere. Traditionally, it is believed that technology development should be uh, the area of uh, imaging industry uh, responsibility. However, breast imaging market is limited by very low revenues. Worldwide market for all the companies, and there, are, there is a plentitude of imaging manufacturers, is estimated about, at about $250 million. In addition, over the last three to five years, imaging manufacturers, due to changing healthcare environment, lost about 40-50% of the normal uh, equipment um, imaging market. There is no incentive, therefore, for them to support technologic innovation in breast imaging. I hope our programs show how government, how joint efforts, risk and cost sharing of government agencies, industry and academia can support innovation of technologies seen by industry as high risk from marketing perspective and by government as of high potential impact on long-term health care. While our investment in technology development is a relatively recent phenomenon driven, driven by uh, recent changes in the marketplace in the healthcare, we traditionally extensively support basic and clinical research, uh, particularly clinical research in uh, uh, imaging technologies. Our program entitled Radiologic Diagnostic Oncology Group has been setting world standards in clinical assessment of imaging technologies. The most recent program uh, in that series is cl uh, multi-center clinical testing of image-guided stereotactic needle biopsy as a means, as a minimally invasive, cost-effective alternative to open surgery. This computerized procedure is expected to replace surgical knife and related deformity with image-guided computerized needle-based procedures. As many of you may know, stereotactic breast biopsy is a simple automated computerized procedure which causes essentially no pain or disfigurement. The cost of this procedure is about 28% com compared to open surgery. Even conservatively estimated, assuming that only 35 to 50% of open surgery were to be replaced by stereotactic needle biopsy, annual national cost savings can be estimated at 0.4 to 0.8 billion dollars, most probably at, at 1 billion dollar at the very least. Our clinical trial is expected to address a number of critical clinical questions. Can stereotactic biopsy indeed replace open surgery? If yes, in what specific clinical situation for what specific patients? What gain in patient management and healthcare costs can be achieved? Only a couple of weeks ago, uh, we allocated $6 million in support of multi-center clinical testing of breast magnetic resonance imaging in order to facilitate testing and implementation of this technology. Preliminary data indicate that magnetic resonance imaging improves detection in women with full radiodense radiopaque breast tissue. 
MRI is able to detect lesions as small as one to two millimeters. In addition, MRI is unique in its ability to, de to define local tumor extent or staging, which is critical for treatment decisions. We see a conventional mammographic image in a 35-year-old woman who presented to, a, to her physician with an enlarged lymph node in her armpit shown in the right upper quadrant. Her breast tissue was so radiodense that conventional mammography failed to demonstrate any abnormality. Breast MRI, on the other hand, clearly demonstrated a focus of breast cancer in the uh, anterior portion of her breast in the nipple area seen as small area of increased signal. Because of single uh, focal nature of this disease shown by MRI, this woman had resection or uh, removal only a small portion of her breast, or as we call breast conservation surgery. This 40-year-old woman with history of previous of breast cancer in opposite breast presented to con conventional mammographic clinic with non-diagnostic multiple calcifications. Um, and it was very difficult to be certain whether or not she had breast cancer. However, when she underwent MRI, particularly three-dimensional reconstruction of multiple uh, 2D cross-sections of, of MRI, this 3D image um, of MRI clearly demonstrated multiple areas of breast cancer, unfortunately, almost still like small cotton balls in the area of her breast. Because of multifocal nature of this disease, uh, this woman um, underwent mastectomy. Our clinical trial in breast MRI is expected to address critical questions related to patient management with breast cancer. What is accuracy of MRI compared to other modalities, such as, for instance, conventional, digital mammography, ultrasound? Can MRI, by improving differentiation between benign and malignant lesions, reduce the number of unnecessary biopsies? Can MRI, by improving local staging accuracy, eliminate unnecessary therapeutic procedures? As expensive as MRI is today, it is national average about $1,000 per patient. Therapeutic modalities, particularly unnecessary therapeutic modalities, are at least nine, 10 times more costly than MRI to patients. Uh, of course, in many more ways than one. Finally, how can MRI, by eliminating, or whether MRI, by eliminating unnecessary diagnostic and therapeutic procedures, can improve cost effectiveness of breast, care, uh, breast cancer care? Clin this clinical trial is expected to facilitate implementation of MRI on a large scale, on a national scale, perhaps international scale. It is expected to produce the data which would form the basis for optimal cost-effective approach to breast cancer care. Clinical data will form basis for regulatory decision by FDA, for reimbursement decision by government agencies and private insurers, for industrial strategic decision on product development, cost containment, and marketing. For, for example, industry right now is working on the development breast dedicated MRI units that will um, bring down, that are anticipated to bring down the cost of MRI to patients by at least um, a factor of five. When Edison invented electric bulb, he was asked, will electricity be ever cheap enough for widespread use? Edison responded, I hope the time will come when only the very rich can afford candles. Traditionally, it is believed that high technologies inflate healthcare costs and dehumanize patient care. We hope that our programs will demonstrate how high technologies can indeed reduce healthcare costs, and also how radiologic art of image interpretation, when combined with, com with computer science and technology, can make patient management more humane, will decrease pain and disfigurement, will improve quality of life. In summary, we believe that strategic partnerships of government agencies, academic community, and industry can bridge the gap between research and marketing as the means of improving access, 
quality and cost effectiveness of breast cancer care on a national scale. Thank you for your attention. First of all, I'd like to thank you for an, uh, an incredibly relevant talk. Just personally, uh, my mother has had double mastectomies and all of this uh, really, really hits home. I also would just like to mention that I had a conversation with a woman who is with the uh, Native American Health Service not too long ago. And when I talked about um, the Institute for Women in Technology, one of the things she was really excited about was, you know, are you going to get involved in issues of breast cancer and can we build some technology that gives us a mammogram that doesn't hurt? And it looks like you're doing a fabulous job at this. Do you have? Um, Thank you very much. Do, do you have a uh, a sense of? I don't know quite how to ask this question, but do you have a sense of how effective you're going to be at getting those mobile units out into communities? Are there m a number of them planned, or are you struggling with funding, or what's the what's the state of that? Uh, it's a very important question. Actually, mobile conventional X-ray mammography. Uh, has been available for, ye for the last 12 years. It was pioneered by UCSF at around 1986. Uh, and there are currently estimated about 650 units, and it, it, it is probably a conservative estimate, available in this country. Unfortunately, 650 units are not going, are not enough. And it is very disappointing for us to see how this country lags behind, for instance, Canada. In British Columbia, Canada, um, uh, mobile units are doing about 15% of all screening studies, and they managed to cover hundreds of thousands of women that never had mammography before. And we hope fervently that we will see the same pattern in this country. Uh, but not only with conventional X-ray mammography, but also with these mobile units that will give people, will give women an option to participate in clinical trials and to have access through clinical trials to some of the world-class expertise through telecommunications. I would actually like to follow up on uh, Anita's last question. Um, from the point of view, now you have these mobile units, and a very important component of this whole scheme is the teleradiology, that is the use of networks to transmit these images to where they can be analyzed by experts. What kind of demands does this application put on the network? Does it have to be real time, or what, you know, is the infrastructure there already today, or do you also have problems at that level? Yes, I, I think that I think you have a, you have several questions. I think you're absolutely right. Mobile units are an inherent part of telemammography because if you want to cover underserved and remote populations, you have to get imaging equipment to them combined with radiologic expertise. If mobile mammography ever, particularly with advanced imaging te technologies as opposed to conventional mammography, if if it were ever to uh, should take off it will have to have, if not real-time interpretation, one can argue what is real-time, at least um, near real-time interpretation so that women, while on the van, can have an opinion whether or not her mammography is entirely normal or whether or not some areas of abnormalities that need to be checked out right away, there and then, according to radiologist's opinion at a remote site. So, um, the bottom line, yes, we want as prompt interpretation a telemammography as we can get it to make it practical so that women will not have to come back for follow-up examination of their abnormalities when when will be somewhere else. You, you just lose the impact. Do you now, know how much information has to be transmitted per single yes, exam? Yes, uh, we estimated that a speed of a network uh, that is required to make this a reality is about one gigabit per second. So as you know, there is no national infrastructure of this kind of telecommunications right now in existence. However, before we will talk about public health service, we have to go through experimental testing of these technologies. And we, were very, we felt very lucky that DOD telemedicine uh, bed leaders agreed to lend us use, to lend us their network in order to be able to test feasibility of the concept. Thank if you. concept uh, were to be proven then, we'll see what we can do to make this uh, technology available to women on a large scale. Yes. Thank you very much. Hi, 
my name is Lisa Siskin from the University of Minnesota. And I had a question um, on the mammography. Due to the cost of the machines, it'll probably take a significant amount of time before they're replaced with digital mammography. However, the computer generated, the computer driven analysis can still benefit many women. Are you looking to research to digitize existing mammograms from general film based mammography and still use the computer analysis? Uh, if I understood your question correctly, computer analysis can be done either, you, know, you have to have uh, obviously an input in the form of electronic signal. Mm -hmm. uh, computer analysis of mammogram can be done in two ways. Either, either you can digitize film or you can generate primary image, primary digital image of uh, the breast. Of course, we prefer to deal with primary uh, digital image of the breast because it is anticipated to have far, uh, far, uh, just much better quality. Right, right. Did I answer your question? Well, no, not really. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> I might not have heard your question very well. I don't think I explained yeah. it. My question is um, because it is a profit-driven market, it will be a long time before many hospitals replace their film-based mammography machines. It's too expensive. Mm -hmm. And so that could lag 10 to 20 years behind. I've worked in a hospital for like five years now, and I've seen how that sort of thinking works. And there's machines that are 20 years old in therapy because it costs a million dollars to replace them. But there's women around the country who have conventional mammography, and it would be useful to digitize these films and have them analyzed especially in rural areas where the analysis is not consistent. Absolutely, yeah. That's correct, because then you have digitized image that, that then, then you can do image processing on computer-aided diagnosis and you can transmit for consultation. Although, once again, when you have image di digitization, as you know, you are limited to the quality of your original film, to the information contained on the film, and probably you degrade some on top of it. So. Uh, however, you're right, it takes a while to bring new technologies to the clinic, but it should because you have to have unequivocal clinical proof that technology dissemination is warranted. Okay. Anita Jones. I have two comments. The first is to reinforce what you've said, that the digital interpretation technologies, whether it's based on MRI input or other digital input, are dramatically better than the previous uh, capabilities for diagnosis. The second comment is not to the speaker, but to the women in the audience. It seems to me a contribution that we can make coming out of the Hopper celebration for women in computing is when it comes time for you to have your mammogram or the next one, ask for a digital process and a digital interpretation and be willing to go to wherever you have to go to, you all travel a lot, to get it. And it seems to me we can apply pressure on the health care system uh, to bring this kind of digital imaging and digital interpretation in earlier than it otherwise would come to the country. Thank you very much, Dr. Jones. What Dr. Jones uh, said is critical because uh, a large part of the intention in U.S. government for, uh, to breast cancer issue have come from consumers of breast cancer and consumers group. Yes? I'm Rhonda Please. Livingston. May I ask how you can determine the difference between doing a mammogram and doing digital imaging how do you know when you look at a mammogram and say, I don't see anything, and then you suddenly do digital imaging and say, I see something different? The, the very first image you showed was so dense and so diverse, I have no clue how you could look at that and say there's something wrong or there isn't. Um, you're absolutely right. That's why clinical evaluation and training of radiologists um, to read new modalities is an inherent part of an experimental clinical trial process. And during clinical trials, it's not enough to say, oh, I like this digital mammography image better. It shows more. It isn't. Because you have to prove whether or not your digital image indeed shows more cancers or more artifacts. That's why it is a, 
requirement of clinical trial that each woman would have either follow-up or over a period of six, 12 months to two years, at the very least, of, of, of whatever abnormality was seen, for instance, on digital versus conventional. And secondly, when degree of clinical suspicion is high enough with digital mammography, these women will be required to have histology. And histology, an anatomic analysis of um, pathologic samples will be a gold standard um, that will decide which modality is better, conventional or digital. Uh, one thing was I was thinking that yesterday, we, I'm Gerda Kambarova from the University of Pennsylvania. We had this discussion about empowering women in less developed country. This seems as a wonderful way actually of making a difference. And another technical question, when you are taking a digital mammography, is the breast deformed? Uh, you mean whether or not uh, compression Currently, is required? Yes. Compression, yes. Uh, I, digital mammography, it's an X-ray modality by definition. Uh, so it will require compression. We hope very much that compression for digital mammography will not be as severe as it is today for conventional mammography, but some degree of, con uh, of compression will be, will be required. O MRI, on the other hand, ultrasound, nuclear medicine will not require any compression at all. So we will have to see what kind of modalities will be most optimal from the standpoint of consumers as well as, uh, uh, as, well as clinical utility.